So let's see how to read dates into R. So first get into this website and download dates.csv. In my case, I placed it here, but you can place it wherever you want. Um, and you need to specify obviously the correct path for read.csv. So after you run that, you, you will get um, the data frame that you want and in this case we have three columns so three variables we have a purchase underscore window purchase underscore motor and a, um, a column that says amount now a difficult thing or a very tricky thing here is that the first column is in the day day month month year 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 uh, format and the second one is the other way around it has first the month, then the um, date or day of the month, and then the year. So let's see how we can instruct R uh, to read these uh, things. So I will be using the as.date uh, function. This will cast a factor into a date. So if you don't believe me, you can do, for example, summary and D, you can see that uh, obviously amount is a numeric um, variable but here purchase motor and purchase window are both factors and we don't want factors we want to treat this um, uh, variables as dates and the reason for that is that we can check whether those dates make sense or not and we can execute uh, date functions such as month or the day or get the weekday or do whatever we want or subtract two dates so this uh, as the date function will require two arguments. The first one will be the variable that we want to transform. In my case, I will start with window. And the second thing is that it requires a format. In my case, I am using uh, D for the day, M for the month, and the capital Y for the year. So the capital Y for the year tells R that this will be uh, four characters. If we use a uh, instead of the capital Y we used this, we will be telling R that the year has two characters. So that's uh, super, super important. So uh, let's run that and see what happens. Now you can see that uh, the the dates here uh, look different. This is, this is because R is correctly treating this as um, states. So you can see that this is 2008, 2008, uh, 03, 03, 10, 10, 5, 11, and then for example the last one is 2008, 99, 2007, 2017, 03, 02. So you can see that these uh, dates are, are fine. We still need to fix the uh, purchase motor column. In this case, we might have a, an extra problem because we have uh, some of the characters, um, or for some of the observations, we have two characters for the month. And an interesting question is whether R would be smart enough to solve this or not. So let's see what happens there. So I will be specifying this pretty much the same thing. The only difference is that here I'm using M and then the D. So it's uh, a little different. But you can see that now I have the results that I wanted. Um, this is 2007, uh, 311, 311. Um, this is 2005, the month and the date, 2018, 5 May, 16th uh, day. So this is, this is fine. An interesting thing is that we have a, um, an issue here. We have a um, NA. So the NA occurs because this date did not exist. And this is one of the greatest things of correctly working with dates. If we were working with uh, strings or factors and we were omitting the fact that these are really dates, 
uh, we wouldn't be having this problem of course but we wouldn't have realized in the first place that this state does not make any sense so obviously the the appropriate way here would be to go back um, to our previous uh, data collection instance and solve this or to talk to whoever uh, created this uh, data set or collected this information and fix uh, this date but one thing that we can do is to omit the um, NA value so we can we can omit that missing value uh, using the na.omit and remember that here the argument that we need to pass to this function is a data frame so that's um, that's good and finally let's see what happens if we run a summary of t well here uh, we, we do have a, an interesting thing the difference is that now that I'm not treating this as factors because th this was this was originally treated as a factor when uh, R read it using the read.csv function. This, these factors obviously are not very useful for working with dates. But now that I have proper dates, you can see that now I have a minimum, a median, a mean date, a maximum date. So you can see how differently R is treating the, um, the dates. And obviously the next step here would be to run, for example, a weekday function or a year function or a month function or whatever we want to run here to pull the corresponding part that we want. Naturally, we can also subtract dates and find what's the difference of days between two dates or the difference in months between two dates. So we can, we can obviously do that as well.